Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me at another Mold Talks. I have a, a really amazing guest. Her name is Dasha. I had a chance to talk to her behind the scenes a bit. We have an incredible story here for you today. Um, Dasha, without further ado, uh, I'd love to give you some space to introduce yourself, who you are, why you're here, and we'll dive right in. Well, thank you, first of all, for having me. My name is Dasha. I am a registered dietitian who specializes actually in gut health for athletes. Um, we own Core Perform, um, which is coming out with its own protein powder and supplement line in March. Um, that'll be an optimized plant-based amino acid ratio to elicit muscle building synthesis the same as whey with just one scoop. So I'm sure that's a lot over a lot of people's heads, but to give you a background, it it basically just means that I'm a, so I'm a practitioner who deals with clients with mold and I have it myself. So, <laughs> well, you know, obviously that's horrible that you deal with mold, but I'm glad that you are, you know, seeing how that can help you help others. Um, and then just to, just to dive back into, you know, what you do. So essentially you're, you help athletes get to their peak performance. Is that, does that sound accurate? Yep. Those specifically awesome. with a lot of digestive issues and a lot of digestive issues um, do end up coming back to mold, unfortunately. Yeah. And we'll definitely dive into that because I have, I have some theories on athletes with air quality. Maybe there's some things there that they're not aware of that can kick them off their game and, and how important air quality should be uh, in that competitive space. Um, we've, we've written some blog posts and articles about that, but uh, would, would be totally interested to hear some of your thoughts on that. But first, I want to I want to I want to kind of dive into your story. You know, first off, thank you so much for being vulnerable here today and, and talking about it. I apologize if some of the questions, you know, can can trigger some emotional response here. Um, definitely do not want to make you upset, of course. But what we want to do is share your story with others who may be empowered, uh, who, who can learn from your, what you've gone through. So just wanted to acknowledge that. And thank you so much for being here today. Um, without further ado, let's kind of, let's talk about kind of how this all happened. You know, when was it that you first noticed you weren't feeling well? Totally. So about a year ago, actually, um, it was still the pandemic was kind of iffy. We were having our first kind of second wave of the pandemic. And, um, I actually started to feel sick. I started to have extreme digestive issues, histamine intolerances, um, and it was nearing the holidays. And so I actually canceled my flight to go see my family for Thanksgiving because of the digestive distress that I was undergoing. And I wow. wasn't sure exactly what was going on. And of course, I didn't want to with everything with COVID, I just didn't want to overstep any boundaries of my own healing process um, as I move forward. But um, I started experiencing a lot of digestive issues, burping, gas, indigestion, extreme histamine sensitivities. My throat felt like it was, if you ever have those floaties in the pool, like those circular donuts, that's what my throat felt like whenever I ate, it was just constant like throat esophageal um, inflammation. And so I got a GI map done. I ordered one for myself and it showed that I had H. pylori. I was not surprised. Of course, that's classic um, H. pylori symptoms, but it made me think, hmm, this looks a lot like mold <laughs> that I see in my patients. So immediately I have a brand new apartment too. So that wasn't the first thing that I ever thought of. Honestly, I thought right. it was H. pylori, but I was like, hmm, what caused the H. pylori? Where did I get it? So even though my apartment is brand new, was just built last year, I was like, I'm determined to find the mold in this apartment. So I went on a wild hunt and I opened up where my AC was and the AC pipe was completely burst and there was mold growing all over it in the back. So I found the mold. I was like, okay, confirmed. I told my um, apartment complex, they saw it. They were like, okay, we bleached it out. Um, that's fine. I healed and I started to get better. And then in January, I came back after traveling for the holidays and I was like, hmm, I'm very immediately sick when I get back home. I know that there's still mold present because they never really cleared it out professionally. They just bleached it and they didn't actually get the spores that was probably floating in the air and everything. So yeah. because they didn't get it professionally cleaned, I was like, I think there's still mold here. I'm really getting allergic reactions again. Um, and they didn't do anything. They said, there's nothing there. We can't see anything because we can't see anything. It's not there. So 
I have now saved seven messages of me putting in maintenance requests saying I'm getting allergic reactions and they would come in waves. So when they cleared it out with Clorox, I would be fine for about a month or six weeks. I would submit another request because I'd start to get allergic reactions again. And then the cycle continued until October, like last month, actually, I was like, enough is enough. I, at this point, am so violently ill. I cannot stand this anymore. And um, over that, that period where I was going back and forth with them, I actually landed in the ER because my symptoms became more and more severe. And I wasn't exactly sure what was going on because I have celiac disease. So a lot of my triggers or flares, I was kind of attributing just to my celiac disease. I wasn't attributing it to the mold or anything. I was having uh, tachycardia extreme, which is um, irregular heartbeats, um, arrhythmias, um, low blood pressure. Anytime I ate or anytime I eat now, it's like I have episodes of just like my nervous system just goes haywire. And so my nervous system is very fragile at this point. Um, anything, any sort of supplement that touches my adrenal glands will completely throw me off for two weeks at a time. I'll have extreme fatigue. Um, again, this like pressure on my heart, it feels like it's being compressed every single day. Um, blood pressure drops and also racing heartbeats. So either one or the other, um, so stabilizing my blood sugar has been very important. Um, but lab wise also, I've been able to track what's been happening and it's very interesting to see how liver enzymes start to go up. Right. Um, my blood sugars are sky high, which doesn't make I'm a dietitian, right? Like I know how to eat healthy, but because my nervous system is in this chronic state of stress, my blood sugars are off the charts. My A1C is very, is elevated, almost pre-diabetic. Um, and it's just been crazy to watch my labs like get so much worse. And so that's why after experiencing all of that and still experiencing it, I was like, enough is enough with this apartment complex. And, um, I took matters into my own hand. I ordered just honestly online. Like I know they're not validated, verified, just a Petri dish. I ordered one for 10 bucks off Amazon just to show them to be like, look, I exposed this in the air for one hour and there's mold growing on my Petri dish. Can you please hire a professional to come clean this? And they did, but now it's been kind of hard because I immediately moved out. All they did was tell me, okay, well, you can move out if you want without any fees. So I moved in with my parents just literally a week ago and um, on the road to recovery now, because as you guys know, the first step in healing is to get out of the apartment or the environment. So yeah, the journey begins and and hopefully ends. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, that's a lot to take in. Um, You know, I'm sorry that you went through all that. And yeah, I mean, you know, using Clorox is not exactly getting to the root cause of the problem and fixing that. So um, I'm glad that uh, you were eventually able to, you know, terminate and get out of there. Um, I know it's, it it can feel like a step back going from your place and your parents place, but this is like a reset, right? This allows you to kind of heal and get, you know, get back to where you need to be. Right. And, and it, and it can take a while uh, to, to that road to recovery, knowing what, you know, obviously you're, you're going to be able to take probably a, a short, some shortcuts uh, as compared to most who are, you know, don't have the advantage of knowing like how to eat right to help, you know, move along the process. Uh, the supplements that, that you know of, of course, like that. So uh, hopefully um, when we, when we wrap up later, definitely uh, share, how people can reach you because I think people might find that type of advice invaluable. Um, so, you know, how long did it take you from when you first started not feeling well to realizing that it was, you know, the environment that was actually uh, causing these symptoms? Once I knew it was H. pylori, my mind said, where's the mold? <laughs> yeah. So once I got confirmation of that, and once I understood um, that I was having just allergic reactions, that's probably one of the most common mold reactions, right? Like candida or some sort of allergic intolerance um, starting to go haywire. And because I have never had allergies in my entire life, like never, the fact that I was getting allergies was really bizarre. And now it's at the point where I have such a limited diet because like 
peanut butter or nightshades or anything like that. Like ashwagandha will just set me extremely off for day again, weeks at a time. So it's been, I'm very blessed in the sense that I've been able to pinpoint a lot of the damages to prevent them from getting worse. Um, but it's definitely not easy. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, definitely, it's definitely amazing that you were able to pinpoint it faster. Um, you know, I move, we've had people that have gone 20 years without really figuring out what's going on. Um, but it doesn't make the journey any easier, you know, and, um, I know that, you know, it's, you're, you're finally just starting your journey now you're, you're getting out of it. Uh, so that's good. Um, you know, I, is this question, is, it feels like it, it may not apply um, just because you kind of pinpointed this, you already know what to look for, but um, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out there anyway, because a lot of people go do, through endless doctor visits before they finally figure it out. Um, you know, did, did you go to, did you, did you happen to see anybody that, um, alerted you to do some types of tests or you, you were your own advocate in the situation? Honestly, unfortunately, unfortunately I had to be my biggest advocate. Um, when I got my GI map, I was my biggest advocate at that point, but I never actually got tested for mold until recently. And, and when I went to the ER or when I went to the doctors, they took all my blood pressure, all my imaging. They were like, you're completely fine. Like you're, you just have panic attacks and anxiety. And I was like, listen, lady, like I know my body. I, again, I specialize in like optimizing performance in athletes. I know exactly what goes into my body, what comes out like to the T I know for a fact, this is not normal. And so, because I wasn't being heard in classical, uh, traditional medicine, I was like, all right, well, clearly I have allergies on something. Let's figure out what exactly it is. So I ordered a full, um, environmental toxin panel, mycotoxin panel. Um, I don't believe in food sensitivity testing. Um, it's just the basis of the clinical evidence that I've seen in the clinical research. So I do an elimination diet with core perform to fully identify what you are actually allergic to. Um, so I know how to process that for myself. So I went through that with myself. Um, okay. yeah. That's awesome. Well, you know, glad that glad that you got to uh, side skirt that journey. Well, actually, you, you did go to the ER. You did go to some doctors. Uh, probably not as as um, as much as some, but yeah. that's awesome. I mean, it's so it's so awesome when you are your own advocate. And unfortunately, kind of like where we are today, right? It's like we almost have to be our own advocates because you know, it's like every time you look for answers, um, it, like people have this one path, and it's like you know, there's no more like getting second opinions and things like that. It's just, everyone's kind of pushing down this one path, you know, Western medicine, if your vitals are good, there's no problem. Right. So, um, you know, it's, it's, we all have to kind of open our horizons a little bit. And one of the things that I always say is like, we take 20,000 breaths per day, but yet it's like one of the last things we look at is what's in our air, what's in our environment that's entering our breathing zone and entering the body. So I'm so glad that you you were informed and, and kind of we're able to, to pivot much sooner uh, than some people. We went over a lot of your symptoms already. Is there anything else that you didn't uh, cover that, that you think it would be valuable to share? Um, I just wanted to also share that I do have a HEPA filter set up right next to my bedroom. So I, Perfect. the whole time I did have good air quality, I would hope from that. And then I also had a reverse osmosis system as well um, awesome. too. So that's why I knew that it had to be something more because if I was addressing my other environmental factors, then I didn't understand why I was still dealing with it. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Like I said, you, you came, you kind of came to the table already knowing, um, you know, a lot more than, than people typically know. And you, you already had the air filtration, you have the reverse osmosis. So that's great. Um, and, and yeah, maybe that helped alert you to the fact that, you know, something isn't right here. Um, and, and I think the whole point of me sharing my story and what I hope to come across with this is that you're literally never alone. Like whatever you are going through, even practitioners, even doctors, whoever it is, like we get it. <laughs> we deal with the same, we're all human. We deal with the same exact issues. And so I have complete empathy for whoever comes to my doors and whatever they say, no matter how crazy it sounds, like I will listen. And I promise that like, we all probably are in the same boat in somewhat. So 
yeah, I just hope you never feel alone with me sharing it just because I'm a practitioner doesn't mean it's perfect. (laughs) No, I love that. And and like, you know, it kind of shows too, like you can be a practitioner, you can be a mold expert and still have to deal with mold. I was, uh, you know, I'm in this place, we had to get all of our ductwork changed. We had an issue, you know, it's like, it's, it just because you know, you know what to do or doesn't mean that you're not privy to that same exposure. Um, so I think it's, it's really great. And I love what you said about, you know, never being alone and, and, and why you're here today. And I think that's so amazing. Um, you know, we, we've kind of lost this sense of community. Um, like, like we post things online and we, we almost are so quick to judge each other instead of support each other. Um, and, you know, I, like, and I think that's really something that I've noticed earlier on in my career. And I think that's what's made me kind of dive more into this and study more into this. You know, th- there's people that that don't agree with me or think that, you know, the methods that I have are over the top. And I think that's that's OK, because um, really what I'm trying to do is create a revolution and, and create things that help people that need to go above and beyond. Right. Like there's a need there. Um, and so it's like everybody is so quick to think that everything is one size fits all. And if you're not in this one lane, you know, you're just judged. And I think that's so wrong. And that and we have to kind of shift our mentality to be more inclusive, right? Because we're all human beings. What happened to humankind, right? I, Emphasis on kind. Yeah, I completely agree. And actually, this was a conversation I was having with a few people earlier this year, actually, was um, we're so quick in our society to hop on ba- bandwagons and, and join certain groups or certain communities, which gives us a sense of, honestly, family, community, a lot of the things that we need as human beings, right? Right. But as we do these things, we actually isolate ourselves. And when we do isolate ourselves in these individual communities, it becomes very much pointing fingers at, oh, you're not doing what I'm doing. You're different than I am. You, 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 you versus understanding that it's all us. We are all one and we are all human beings at the end of the day. So treating someone differently because they're in a different community, they're in a different whatever they need to be happy you should be glad and thankful and supportive of whatever they need to be doing to get to a better place for them. Um, and maybe that's not directly beneficial for them, that community at that time, but it definitely is a journey that will lead them to learning and learning more. Totally. You know, we can all, we can all do a little better to make this world a better place, myself included. Uh, oh, I'm constant, I'm constantly learning. learning, you know, I'm constantly learning how, how to, how to do better, how to be better, uh, even through negativity, I, I try to figure out what's, what's the positive thing that I can take from this. Um, and I think, you know, that, that, that's really important because for so many people, and I'm sure you felt this way and we, and, and, and if you did, please share, um, there some, for so many people, like they're not accepted when they think that they have mold in their home, when they think they're being exposed, like they, they really are gaslit and looked at like they're crazy. And the doctors are like, that's insane. Even though there's so much research out there, even though that there's literally scientific data explaining how this works, you have media coverage nonstop globally, you know, it's like, it's still hard for people to just be accepting when it's something that they haven't gone through. And I think that we're kind of missing the boat with that. So yeah, did you, did you have any, any experiences with that support system or lack of thereof? I just got remember, I I remembered um, that when I got my lab tests with my doctors, they tested me for an IgE panel for mold. And by the way, this is exactly one of the reasons why I don't believe in food allergy testing or in um, food sensitivity testing. Um, My IgE came back completely at zero for mold when my doctor did test for it in June, July. My limits when I did a urine analysis with mold and mycotoxin testing was exorbitantly thousand percent above what the normal limits are. So again, I just, if your doctor says you're fine, just double check with someone else who might not think you're fine and actually believe you. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's a, it's a great point. You know, I always get a second opinion. I mean, yeah, it's, I'd say that when you, when you get an opinion on anything in life, always get a second opinion. Um, I think it, it helps you to kind of look, look back and forth and correlate to what you believe in, what you feel, and plus other people's expert opinions, because just because you're an expert at something um, or, or you do something for a living doesn't mean that you do it well. It doesn't mean that 
you know, you have exhausted all options and studying uh, to better your practice, right? It just means that that you're in the profession and you're you're getting paid to deliver a service. So, you know, it's it's always get a get a second opinion, especially when it comes to your health. You want to make sure that you're you have the information so that you can do something about it. And I think that's the key there. Um, let's let's kind of dive into how did um, how did this exposure, you know, and it, it's still impacting your life now. How did how did it impact your life? Your ability to just do normal things. Um, and, um, you know, whatever that may look like for you. And, uh, what, what is that, what is that like even still today? Definitely need more breaks. Um, when I, whenever I have episodes, if I'm going through episodes, I cannot show up for my work. I need to take a step back. I've had to take meetings and like there were zoom meetings and I just said, guys, I can't show my face because I have to lie down on my couch right now because my heart is just like hurting literally. Um, so it definitely impacted my work. A lot of brain fog. I actually remember giving a, um, class, um, last month, I believe. And in the middle of it, like my brain just shut off completely. And I was like, I was so embarrassed, but I was like, honestly, you guys, like I have extreme brain fog right now. I can't remember where I was just going. I need to completely start from zero. And I was fully transparent and honest. I was like, I think I have mold in my environment. I'm really sorry. Let me just start over and regather my thoughts. Um, but that happened. Like I was completely very embarrassed and it, it happened and there's nothing I can really do about it. And I think that empathetically, I hope that other people can understand who have been through this or have felt this, that it's not something you can control. Of course, I would never go on and teach a class and be like, I can't think of what I was going to talk about today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. And I would imagine like just freezing up there and like, uh, you know, I know for me, if I, if that happened to me, I know I would, this, the anxiety would set in. I was like, oh my God, what do I do? You know, yeah. but it sounds like you handled it well. I mean, you know, just kind of being transparent and saying, guys, I'm, I'm dealing with this, had mm -hmm. some brain fog. Well, let me just start over and let's just pretend like that never happened. And I think that, you know, that, that sounded like that, that probably worked pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully. Yeah. So, it, you know, just talking about the remediation. So like, basically you didn't really have a remediation because the apartment came in and did whatever they considered removing the problem. They didn't deal with the roots, the, the root cause you, you kept going down this, this dwindling spiral here of, you know, actually probably more of a roller coaster of feeling good, not feeling good. Um, and then that led you to today of kind of moving out. Um, you know, I think I, just to, just to kind of harp on that, like it's so important, um, for someone who's in an apartment, um, you know, you can't always control, obviously, who the landlord hires, the apartment complex or whatever it may be. Um, but, you know, sometimes you do have good landlords or do have good apartments that that maybe will give you more control. Obviously, you know, control the controllables. For you, that was they, they let you out of the lease. You're able to move out. That was what you could control. If you have the ability to control, always like look for an inspector, look for a remediator who actually looks at this from a health perspective and not just like, you know, ah, I just want to do a, give a good deal to the landlord and cut some corners so that they continue to hire me. Like have someone that, that cares about this from a health perspective. And, you know, I think that's like a big red flag if you're looking for someone and they're like, yeah, it's no big deal. It's like, well, why are you, why are you in this profession if it's no big deal? Like imagine being a doctor and being like, yeah, being sick isn't that big of a deal or like dying is really not that big of a problem. So like, how can you, how can you help somebody with that mentality? And so I look at, look at the same thing from like the mold professional world. You know, it's one of the things that drives me nuts is hearing these people that like gaslight people. It's like, what are you in the industry for? If you don't want to help people, um, you know, and so I just, I wanted to kind of briefly cover that. And then, you know, while I have you here and obviously it's, it sounds like your journey's incomplete. Is there anything that I can do in real time to help support you? Is there any questions that you have for me um, that we can cover? Because, it, you know, people may have similar questions, so it may be valuable. All right. Well, first, let me just say um, that I really appreciate you saying that. And um, the whole reason why I pursued even them, I didn't just move out when I knew there was mold is because I knew that if it was in the air, then it was traveling to other units. So I actually started once I was 
saying, look, enough is enough. It's in the air. I went to my neighbors and I knocked on their doors and I was like, listen, I'm moving out because there's mold in my apartment. Are, I just want to make sure you're okay and that you have the, the right tools you need to heal if you're dealing with anything. And so I talked to my neighbors and funny enough or not so funny enough, um, they all are, she was like, oh yeah, like I started getting allergies for the first time in my life, like in April for no reason. And I was like, I was like, oh boy, okay, let's set up a HEPA filter in your house as well. While we're dealing with this, I'll make sure that even if I move out, like I may, I will be in contact with you of anything that I hear about what they're doing with the results of the professional who came. Um, so that's really what I want. I want justice for the, the people around me. I want to make sure that they're okay as well. So with that said, do you know a good mold lawyer? Because I'm going to need one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there it obviously varies state to state because every state has their own bar and stuff like that. Um, the best thing I can recommend to you, like as a quick, easy answer without even knowing where you live, is if you Google toxic tort attorney, that's mm-hmm. the term, toxic tort. Um, that, that basically deals with like, you know, environmental exposures, toxins, et cetera. Um, and that's the attorney that you would, that's the type of attorney that you would want. Like you wouldn't want a divorce attorney, you know, to deal or a real estate attorney to deal with this. You'd want a toxic tort attorney um, because I think that they're, they're going to be a lot more prone to understanding the exposure elements of things because it's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it can be a slippery slope. And if just like any good defense, it has to be done right. Um, and just, you know, kind of to touch on that, you know, my, my belief is this, if you're a landlord, you own a property, like it's your responsibility to own those problems. And so if there's a problem with the AC, if the ACs are defective, that's allowing this to happen, which it sounds like is exactly what happened. You know, they have to go in apartment to apartment and fix it and clean up the mess. Um, you know, it's, I don't know why we don't look at things that way. Um, if you're a homeowner and a tree, you know, happens to fall through your roof, like you got to deal with it. Right. Um, so I don't understand why, you know, problems exist and we just allow people to not deal with it properly. Um, and I think that's another like societal shift that we need to, to, to have is like, look, I understand sometimes things happen and there's costs involved, but it doesn't mean we can ignore them. Right. Um, when I talk to centers and stuff about these problems, like, one of the questions that always gets asked is like, well, what about the environmental aspects of this? And it's like, well, wait a second. So we're not going to give people truth so they can make an educated decision and spend their money how they see fit because we're worried about the economic impact. Like that's not how this works, right? You give people truth and that truth allows people to make decisions and become advocates of how they're going to deal with the problem. And I think that that is like another misconception that, that I, I love to, to highlight because it, it's something that, that that's like one of the biggest points that I always make. Like we can't just keep ourselves in the dark, continue to get sicker and sicker because we're worried about the fact that this could cost money to, to fix, you know, and I think um, we spend a lot of money on, on tons of other things. Right. So I would let's, say let's, it's, it's the opposite, right? When there's unfortunately, when there's sickness, there's more opportunity for pharmaceutical companies to create alternatives for new small businesses to be arised from these problems. So if anything, let's stay positive and say that there would be opportunities, right? That would be, that would come apart from that. But of course, I'm not an economist and I have not looked into the data. So I cannot speak other than my little positive cheery note. (laughs) Yeah, no, I just think, you know, I think it's, I agree with you there too. I mean, obviously there's a lot to unpack there, but just alone, like you gotta, you know, you can't just say the problem is, is insurmountable. So we're not, we're going to hold back some of the information. It's like, no, put the information out there, let people make their own decisions. And um, everybody's going to have to figure out and and adapt and evolve just like we do with everything else out there, you know? And so that's something that, that I, I, I love to touch on just while we had the opportunity to, Um, I, I, you know, and so is there anything else that, you know, you wanted to share that you think is relevant with your mold journey um, so far? Um, and then, you know, like anything, anything else that I can help you with would be amazing while we're here together. Um, you know, please 
feel free to engage and, and happy to kind of dive into whatever topics you'd like to discuss. So what I thought was interesting, which I think we talked about earlier, that we wanted to do a little medical breakthrough on this. Mm. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll bring it up now. But um, one of the things that was really, really fascinating was um, I, in April or February, just in the start of all of this, um, I did a microdose. And so I went on a journey with a mentor of mine in a very healed, controlled um, environment in order to see the benefits of psychedelics in order to optimize like efficiency and business aspects. And so during that time, actually, when I took it, I had an extremely bad reaction. So if you think about mushrooms in general, it is a fungi, a yeast. And so when you put it into yeah. a toxic body, um, I had an extremely poor reaction. I felt like I was food poisoned. My, I drank like gallons of water to try and get it out of my system. My body felt awful. I couldn't recover for a couple of days. The next day I woke up and I felt like I was hit by a bus hungover. Like I had had like 10 drinks the night before, which is really bizarre because it was a microdose and it was very controlled. And of course the person with me was completely fine. Um, and it was just my reaction that was so poor. So when I was going through it, I was just like, hmm, must be like an autoimmune thing with my celiacs. Again, I always brushed everything off throughout this journey to my celiacs. I just thought, you know, my, uh, my immune system is weird. So maybe I have an allergy to that or something, mm -hmm. but as I'm becoming more aware of this mold problem, I'm not surprised that that happened because now I, I mean, I'm completely intolerant to mushrooms in my diet, yeast in my diet, because that'll just flare me off with really bad, um, heart episodes. So it's interesting because it also, I believe, rewired my brain. So if you're aware of psychedelics, a lot of the healing aspects comes from its ability to um, cognitively rewire certain um, neurons in the, in the mind in order to elicit a new outcome and regenerate that pathway, which can be very healing for a lot of people. And there's a lot of promise in this industry for PTSD, for I think you were saying like soldiers coming back from combat. So um, unfortunately for me, it actually rewired my brain to have these panic attacks as if I was having a heightened immune response whenever I consumed these foods that I was allergic to. So if I have mushrooms now or anything like that, I actually start, first of all, getting these panic attacks and feelings of dooms because my mind, it feels like it's associating that heightened immune response with that time period. So mm. I find that very, very fascinating. And I hope in the future, someone can dive into that um, a little bit deeper. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for those listening who, who maybe aren't aware, um, there is a lot of studies going on right now uh, utilizing psychedelics, um, in a controlled, uh, medically controlled environment. Um, meaning that it's not just being done on the streets, but they're actually being done in labs, um, with, with people who are trained in utilizing psychedelics, uh, for treatment and therapy, um, and with people dealing with, um, uh, the PTSD, um, you know, uh, coming back into society as a veteran who may be dealing with some, you know, mental health issues. Um, so it's, it's being kind of studied uh, in its efficacy and in, in kind of dealing with some disorders, especially in the mental health space. Uh, so for those that, that aren't aware, that's kind of what we're talking about. It's, it's called uh, micro dosing and, and done in this controlled environment. And then, um, so the it's, studies, it's, it, sorry, yeah. the studies are being done a lot in therapeutic ways, of course, because how yeah. would they fund a study if it wasn't being done in therapeutic ways? Um, but right. there, in recent years, it's been really um, being surpassed in actually like the Silicon Valley area for a lot of high level CEOs. What they do is they're using microdosing as like an opportunity to just whiteboard and take the whole day to like 
create like an entire new business plan or strategize their funneling systems or whatever it is. So that's kind of the, the secondary yeah. bubble that's being um, created as well. Yeah. So, you know, that, uh, thank you for that. I actually didn't even know that part. I know kind of more of the medical side, but, you know, just to, just to kind of tie it all together, um, it's interesting, right? Because as, as the studies happen, um, there may be, cause nothing's ever a one size fits all, but there may be people that have those types of reactions like you had. Um, mm -hmm. and perhaps someone who's listening to this can, can relate to, you know, certain things that should work that aren't, maybe it is because there's already an overload of fungi, um, in their environment that creates this type of negative effect. So it's interesting. Um, this is the first time that I've ever heard this. So really appreciate you sharing that. And uh, yeah, we're going to archive this and hopefully uh, the right person comes along and, and listens to this and says, aha, maybe there's some dots to connect here. Mm -hmm. For sure. Like I you hope said, so. a medical breakthrough. That would be awesome. So, um, you know, we're, you're through this journey right now. Um, are you starting to feel better since you've been out of there for the past week? Honestly, no, but it's partially my fault because I, again, my food allergies. So I had peanut butter and I had mushrooms, which both set me off. <laughs> so <laughs> haven't been healing very well, but I'm, I'll get to it. I'll be stricter. That's well, look it, you know, I, that's a difficult process, right? Because it, it's, it's really lifestyle changes and uh, I'm sure you like peanut butter and mushrooms and uh, you know, um, but yeah, I guess I, it's, it's, it's a process, right? And you're kind of starting that road. Um, obviously, I, I wish you a speedy recovery and, uh, you know, and, and continue to uh, heal. Um, is there anything that you wanted to kind of share? Or, or how about this? Um, if you had to recommend one thing to somebody, what, what would it be? Never put your health second to anything. Because if you don't have the power to step up for your own plate and for your own health, you absolutely do not have the authority to even begin to help others. Um, so that's why I am very, very much an advocate for my own health, because if I don't perform again, my clients can't perform. So same thing goes to you, whoever you are as a mom, as a human being, you need to take care of yourself. I love that. Thank you for that. And, um, you know, before we go here, how can people find you if they want to connect? Um, maybe they have, maybe they want to know about you personally um, to connect with you due to, you know, them experiencing similar uh, traumas, or, you know, maybe they have, they want to check you out as far as uh, the, the, the medical um, side of things that you do and, and the, the dietitian and nutrition that you're kind of coaching. And you, you work with people who have mold and you help them through that as well. Yes, Perfect. I have quite a few mold stories of my own patients and clients. So the good news is I know all my own protocols to use on myself. I just have to do. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, so how, how do people connect with you to, to, to learn more about working with you or Absolutely. just connecting yeah. in general? My IG is Dasha Fitness, D-A-S-H-A -A Fitness. Um, you can also find us our IG at Core Perform on Instagram, or you can just go to coreperform.com. I have a bunch of resources, free recipe books, et cetera, to heal your gut and everything. Again, I focus more on gut health in general, but um, we do deal with a lot of mold as a result of that gut health. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great and rewarding journey. And if there's anything I can do for anyone who's listening, please, please, please reach out. Awesome. Yeah, no, and inflamed gut, inflamed brain, inflamed society, right? And that opens a door to chronic disease. So um, yeah, no, I really appreciate what you do and helping others, uh, you know, kind of get the answers they need to, to make the change. Um, it's so, it's so needed. So thank you for that. And thank you for coming here, being vulnerable, sharing your story. Um, and, and I hope that, that people connect with you and, and, uh, get to learn more about what you're doing. Cause I think it's amazing. Well, I hope the same and wish the same for you. Thank you so much for having me.